Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Shuchandra Ghosh, Professor, Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta. The title of the paper is Indian Culture and the broad heading of Indian Numismatics. I will be discussing today the Indo-Scythian and the Indo-Parthian coins. As you know, the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent was ruled for a pretty long time by different groups of foreigners coming from the West. After the Greco-Bactrians and the Indo-Greeks, we have the presence of the Indo-Scythians and the Indo-Parthians in this region followed by the Kushanas. The history of the Indo-Scythians has to be studied from their coinages because other sources are very rare. Scythian is a generic term used for the people who were ruling originally in Central Asia and from there they moved into parts of uh, West Asia and South Asia. <coughs> Among these the groups of Scythians, Mawes or known as Moga in the inscriptions was the first group who came downwards from the Pamirs to the area of India which was known as Taxila region. Apart from Mawes group, there are other groups of Scythian rulers who are the uh, known as Vonones and with Vonones there were rulers like Agis, Agilisis and Agis for second. So the Vonones group ruled mainly in the Arakosian region of the uh, South Asia. They had a system of joint rulership so therefore there was always a co-ruler and in their coins what we find is that on the obverse with the Greek legend, they have the name of the main ruler and on the reverse with the Prakrit legend written in Kharoshti, they have the name of the subordinate ruler. Otherwise, these rulers followed the Greek tradition of issuing coinages, often using the same deities for their reverse devices. Here you can see the map on which the territory of the Scythians are demarcated. So therefore, you know that the Scythians ruled um, in the regions of Taxila, that is the re where Mavis was centered, the region to the west and east of the Indus region in Arachosia, and they moved, particularly the Ages group, moved as far as Mathura. The earliest Shaka kingdom was established in 158 BC in a region of extreme northwestern section of the subcontinent. This included the Darel Valley and the Swad Valley on the Indus. The area was then known as part of Chipin. The extension of the Shoko ruler to Shadheri, that is the present Takshila region, is suggested by an inscription in that locality which talks of the great king, the great Moga. Moga has been universally identified with Mo or Mawes of legends on a several variety of coins. The group of Mawas was ousted from the Taxila area and also perhaps from Gandhara to the west of the Indus by the Indo-Greek ruler Hippostratus. So you will see that while the Indo-Greeks were present in different pockets of northwest India, Mawas had already entered into the subcontinent. So there was an ambience of political contestation and therefore sometimes one ruler subsumed the other ruler. Uh, Mawes was the first of the rulers and he issued a several coin types which are very important. For example, he had we have coins where we have the depiction of elephant on the on his obverse and then we have the on the depiction of caduceus on the reverse. And what is interesting to note that Mawes did not have coins with his own portrait. We have another very interesting coin by issued by Myers and this is probably from the Taxila Mint where we have that Helios, we have the sun god Helios who is actually driving a biga that is charioteer in biga and then on the reverse we have Zeus sitting on the throne. So these type of coins were produced in the mint from Taxila and therefore from the coin types, we can understand the territorial extension of these rulers. Another interesting type is the Zeus Nike type, where you have the standing Zeus on the obverse and on the reverse you have the uh, Nike who is holding a wreath on her hand and you have a particular monogram. 
A third important type of coins for Maoists is radiate Artemis. This is a very interesting type because you do not find it in many uh, coins of many rulers. So here we have Artemis who is radiate and uh, the chiton is blowing on the wind and on the reverse you have the humped bull which is a significant signifier of the Pushkalavati region. So you have reference to Pushkalavati perhaps in the uh, that is in the Peshawar district. So this coin can be identified as a coin from Pushkalavati. Another interesting coin type of Mavis was stand that where we have Heracles. He uses the reverse device of the Indo-Greeks uh, as his overs and we find that Heracles standing facing holding club and he's having a lion skin and on the reverse we have lion walking to the left. The device which Mavis issued uh, was that of Zeus standing half left male deity is standing facing. A very important and interesting coin type that has been found in the coins of Mavis is that of representation of Machini. She is sitting on a throne and on the reverse you have Zeus with Nike. Now Machini is not an Indo-Greek name. So perhaps she was uh, from some other Scythian family and Maoist group pro probably had some kind of matrimonial alliance with uh, Machini. Therefore she is represented in the obverse and on the reverse we have the representation very typical of Maoist Zeus with Nike. There is another coin type which is very rare where we normally uh, because as I mentioned earlier we do not have Maoist's portrait but here this coin is said to be having a uh, sitting a uh, ruler sitting on a horse and said to be of Maoist and on the reverse we have the Nike type. What we find then next is that with Maoist if we look at his coin types we have Maoist ruling in regions to the west of the Gandhara, regions to the northwest of India. For example, the Artemis type was taken from the co coins of Artemidorus and then we have his coins in the Taxila region. So therefore, the territory of Mavis, which was under his control, can be said to be the region of Taxila, Gandhara, Hazara district and regions to the west of the Indus and larger part of the northwest India from where actually the Greeks reconquered and then started to rule and it was the Indo-Greeks ruler Apollodotus II who recovered some areas from Mavis's territory. Now we will come to the second group of Scythian rulers of whom the most famous were Aegis I, Agilisis and Aegis II. They belong to the Vononis group of Arachosia. Voronis declared independence from the Arsacid rulers and began to rule in Arachosian region with the joint co-rulership of Spalirisis, Polohoro and others. We have Aegis I ruling with Spalirisis while Spalirisis was in, the, was in the obverse and Aegis' name was on the reverse. Uh, as you can understand that these two rulers, they succeeded the realm of Mavis in the Indian uh, subcontinent. The coinage of these two Scythian kings forms a uniform series of coinage that succeeded Maoist's coinage and was itself followed by coinage of Aegis II. Recent study by Robert Senior argues that there were no Aegis II, it's only one Aegis. But this is not accepted in general. Therefore, we have to the two rulers in the name of Aegis. So one was Aegis I and the other was Aegis II. Large part of the northwest of India was under the control of Aegis I and his huge output of coins suggests this great increase in coinage and leading to increase in wealth. He might have reached to the northern part section of the well, northwestern section of the Indian subcontinent from Arachosia through the Gomal Pass and through the regions watered by the Gomal, Tochi and Kurram rivers. The extents of his coin can be of his kingdom can be understood from the reverse devices of his coins, whereas the mountain, uh, for example, the mounted king armed palace Athena type can be located in the Bajau territory and whereas the Taxila type has 
for example the uh, Zeus with Nike was located in the Taxicola region. These territories were conquered from the Indo-Greek ruler Hippostratus. That these territories in Punjab was taken over by Ajis I is also corroborated by the Ambala Horde which stops with the coins of Hippostratus. From the Indo-Greeks, Ajis I also conquered the Sin Sagar Dwab, including Taxila. The figure of standing Zeus holding a Nike is uh, very common and has been attributed to the Taxila region. Ajis is represented as oil in the coins of his coins. So the reverse legend as the Indo-Greeks was in Greek and the reverse legend was in Karoshti and Prakarshti script and Prakrit language. Now how do we know about the presence of two edges or how do we identify the two edges? We have certain signifier. Number one, the basic criterion has been that the mounted horseman shown on the obverse of most of the coins of Ajis' first has contains a spear while coins of Ajis II carries a whip. Secondly, the other criteria for differentiating between coins of Ajis I and those of Ajis II is based on control marks, metrology and coin types. Coins of edges first are characterized by different ranges of control mark from those used by edges second. The third point is edges second's coin are highly debased. There was evolution from broad thin flans to smaller thick flans during the time of edges second. So the good quality coins belonged to edges first and the coarse crude coins belong to the reign of edges second. Finally, Edges first used the title Raja Rajaso in general, whereas Edges second used Rajati Rajaso. So these are the different markers, but we have to remember that it was not happening simultaneously in all the coins. Now we will go gradually to the coins which represent one of the areas where Edges first or Agilisis or Edges second ruled. The joint rulership was such that first we had coins of Agis first on the offers, uh, name of Agilisis on the reverse, then we had Agis first ruling independently, then Agilisis, Agis second, Agis second ruling independently, and then Agis second ruling with a Shatrapa ruler. In this particular coin, this is from Pushkalavati, it is very interesting that we have the representation of a humped bull and we have the representation this is the the city goddess is actually represented in the obverse and the bull is represented on the reverse so the city goddess wears a turreted crown this is an inspiration from the greek city goddess 2k where here it is amba and the legend says pakhalavati devata ambae Another very interesting coin type of Agis and Agilisis are that in one of the coins, for example, we have uh, Maoist's coin, you have Zeus Nike, but if you look at the Agilisis coin, here you have the representation of Lakshmi standing and she is being anointed by two elephants. This is the Abhijinchan of Lakshmi type and this was found in the Mathura region. So this shows that Mathura was under the control of Agilisis. The Zeus Nike type is also a very common type which was uh, used for the Taxila region and Agis along with Mavis continued the Zeus Nike type in this region. As I mentioned earlier that when we have to identify Agis 1, we have to see that whether the mounted king device which is, was the very common device among the Indoscythians, whether he is holding a sphere or he is holding a whip. Here in the mounted king device, we find that Ajis is being represented as sitting on a horse with a spear and on the reverse, we have winged Nike holding a wreath as if she is ready to crown somebody. This is a very coarse uh, picture, very crude, but it shows again the mounted king with the spear and on the reverse you have Zeus standing with his thunderbolt 
uh, on his right hand and his uh, stand on his uh, on his left and a scepter on his left and there is a monogram also agilizes coin used also the type where we have the mounted king along with the sphere and on the reverse you have nike holding a wreath so he continued the coin type which was used by edges first another very interesting coin type was issued by agilizes and this is the mounted king along with the dioscuri the dioscuri we have already seen was prevalent among the indus greek ruler for example eucratitus had used the dioscuri the two brothers castor and pollux in his coins and here we find dioscuri is not riding a horse as in the indo greek coins but here the two brothers are standing facing holding their uh, scepter kind of spear kind of thing and they are represented with a kind of headdress which is known as the pilos sometimes we do not have the representation of the image of the brothers on instead as in the indo greek coins we had only the representation of the palms and the pillow in the picture so in this coin we have the representation of a king mounted king sitting on a horse with a whip on the hand and on the reverse we have palace athena represented and if you look carefully you will find the dress of the king he is wearing a cataphractus type of garment which is actually the common garment that was being used by the rulers of these regions particularly the scythians were very uh, using cataphractus and that is being represented in the coins uh, what we can see from the study of these coins is that that we have uh, three uh, three rulers for example agis first agilizes and agis two now from their coin types we find that agis first was ruling in arachosia to the regions to the east and west of the indus river and to regions of northwestern punjab northwestern part of the indian subcontinent agilizes continued with this but then he extended his power till the mathura region when agis second had come then agis second lost arachosia because we have this text called Strathmoy Parthikoy from the Isidore of written by Isidore of Carax of the 1st century BCE which mentions that this region Arachosia was within the realm of the Arsacids that is the Parthians therefore Agis II lost Arachosia to the Parthians and he had control over regions till the Mathura area we have also inscriptions to suggest that Agis II was collaborating with his general Strategus uh, Aspavarman and who was the son of Indra Varman. So in this way we find that this group that is the Agis group continued to rule for a longer period uh, and uh, for a large, amount, uh, large part of the Indian subcontinent. Another very important feature of this is that we have an era known as the Agis era which is similar to the Vikrama era and which starts from 58 BCE. The inscriptions of the region uh, writes that this inscription was inscribed in the year of, of the king Aya that is Aja and that is identified by Ajas. So we now know an era was instituted by Ajas first in 58 BC. We have some barbarous copies of Agis and Agilisis as tetradrachum which you can see here. So which shows that coins are always not beautifully stuck. They are the, sometimes we have very debased coins which are copies and are not in a very good condition. Now we shall move to the third set of the beginning of the Indo-Parthians. And the Indo-Parthian rulers ruled in the same region where the Indo-Scythians were ruling. So the Indo-Parthians actually succeeded the Indo-Scythians. Its presence in Arachosia and Shakastana, the two regions of the Parthian Empire, are well attested by the numismatic evidence. And like for, uh, in other coinages, other uh, examples too, these Indo-Parthians also 
issued a number of coins and for writing or reconstructing their history we have to depend mainly on their coin types. But we are lucky here we have one inscription the Taktibahi inscription which refers to one it is in the Peshawar district and refers to one Guduvara who has been identified with Gondopharis of coins. He ruled in the middle of the first century CE. The first ruler who founded this dynasty and began to carve out a kingdom by expanding his control from Sistan through Arakosia and north to the Kabul Valley and over Gandhara and the neighboring regions was Gondopharis. He may have begun to rule uh, towards the end of Ajay's second reign. And what is interesting is that he is referred to in the act of Thomas. The story goes that Gondopharis wanted to build a palace and he asked his Raja Sreshti, whose name was Habban, to get him a carpenter. So St. Thomas came to the court of Gondopharis disguised as a carpenter in order to propagate Christianity. Therefore, the story of St. Thomas coming to northwestern part of Indian subcontinent is referred to in the Acts of Thomas. Gondopharis was succeeded by a series of rulers of whom we have the names of Orthogonus, Pacores, Sassus and others. You can see the, in the map the Indo-Parthian kingdom and if you compare it with Indo-Scythians, you will find that more or less the same territories were under their control. So we have a part of Arakosia which was later on taken away. Uh, then we have Taxila, we have Shagala that is Sialkot, then we have the Kabul Begram region, the region to the west of the Indus and we have the lower Indus country within the territory of Gondopharis. A very important uh, port known as Barbaricon is, was at that time active in the lower Indus country and according to the opinion of Periplus Tes Erythras Thalassus, we find that in this region the Parthian princes were ruling and it said that they were chasing each other which means after Gondopharis there were several Parthian rulers who were involved in infighting among themselves. Gondopharis's coins can be understood from particular symbols because in all his coins and the coins of his followers we have some symbols. Here we can see in the coins of Arakosia, we have the king uh, riding, mounting a mounted king on, in the obverse and on the reverse we have the representation of the Gondopharian symbol. From again from Gandhara we have the mounted king riding and then we have Zeus uh, looking towards the right. Uh, in this coins please notice that stylistically they are different a little degraded from the coins of the earlier so there is no naturalism in the modeling that we found in the coins of the Greeks. Uh, as I mentioned the uh, act of Thomas so if we look at the uh, chronology of Gondopharis then we find that uh, we have to place him in around uh, 20 to 46 uh, CE and because the Taktifai inscription is dated in the year of Ages and the date is known to us 103 therefore we Gondopharis is placed uh, during a period between 20 to 46 CE. Now in this coin type we can see again that Gondopharis is riding on a horse, we have the Gondopharian symbol and then we have Zeus represented on the reverse. The bust Nike type of Gondopharis was issued in the lower part of the Indus region. This region was unaffected by the debasement of coins and as I mentioned earlier that Barbaricon was an important port in this region and therefore trade relations was very important for the rulers who were ruling in this region. Now we will see certain coin types of Gondopharis which were being issued and you will see that in each of the coin types the Gondopharian symbol is there, the king is holding a whip and then uh, you have representation of um, uh, gods are in the, uh, on the obverse and as well as, on, as in the reverse. But what is important is that when we look at the coin types of Gondopharis we find that 
he controlled the lower indus country which is represented by the coin type of zeus nike and ik and then we have that he controlled the gandharan area took charge of that area he continued the king mounted on horseback like his predecessors the indian indus kithians for the western part of the gandhara area which included pushkalavati he actually gave it to the subordinate rulers the aprachar rajas he ousted the rajuvula and his um, successors from the region of the jammu pathan coast area so in this way he held control over a larger part of the northwestern part of the subcontinent in this series uh, if you look at this coin we find that the greek practice of using bust was again revived uh, that is the royal portraits and so you have the bust left on the left wearing round topped headdress and uh, it is double struck on the obverse and on the uh, reverse you have king enthroned right crowned by winged nike standing which which stands behind him so always remember that winged nike nike was the goddess of victory for the greeks and so the symbolism of nike was very important for this ruler whenever they wanted to show the some kind of victory it was important for them that they use the device of either nike singularly holding a reed on her hands or having nike with zeus which gave it a further legitimation the successors of gangaforis one of the very important successors were orthogonus he issued a series of coins where he, we have the bust of the ruler and you can see the parthian element in the uh, in the iconography in the in the face and on the reverse we have representation of nike sometimes palace athena so these kind of devices continued then we have representation of uh, the indo parthian ruler pakoris pakoris too used winged nike bust of the king and the obverse and winged nike on the reverse this slide actually explains that how with the passage of time some of the alphabets changed in the, uh, during the time of the parthians so therefore for example instead of sigma we have the lunate sigma which looks like a c and so when they are writing basilios basilion so they are using this lunate sigma then we have instead of the round omicron we have the square omicron we have square rho we have square omega so we there is a shift and from this letterings we can understand the change in the writing style doric sigma was introduced in the borderland later on during the time of the kushanas the gondoferian kingdom was quite vast and it extended from sistan uh, to the northwestern part of the subcontinent and what we find is that he probably gave a lot of uh, room to the shatrapas to the satraps who were ruling under him here this is a coin of a satrap standing to right facing greek city goddess and goddess of good fortune tuke is standing to the left tuke holds a diadem uh, or a wreath as if ready to crown the satrap and also she holds a cornucopia so the symbolism of this coin type is that the satrap was actually gaining power in uh, during that um, uh, for century ce in the northwestern part of the subcontinent gondoferis continued to rule and it was uh, there were geographical variations and uh, we find that he expanded his influence from the sistan to the river satluj his policy of conquest was by a system of absorption where local rulers were allowed to have some kind of own independence the kingdom collapsed uh, collapsed as a result of the intervention by the kushanas and we find that uh, this happened uh, from we, we know about this from the overstrikes of kujula kodfisus over the coins of gondoferis this indicate very clearly that krujula brought to an end the parthian rule in the paraponesadai kabul begram region and gandhara so there were many rulers in the indo parthian kingdom who followed gondoferis whose names uh, can be seen as abdagasas pakores orthogonus sasas and so on therefore we find that when we look 
in um, in totality the period of the Indo-Scythian and the Indo-Parthians, we find that this was a period where we have lot of political contestations, rulers from different dynasties ruling over the same pockets, having some kind of rivalry, but the coins also show from the reverse devices a kind of accommodation and uh, though they followed the most of the devices from the Indo-Greeks, there were some local inputs also. For example, the Abhishinchan of Lakshmi, then elephant with three riders. So these were the uh, innovations that happened from the indigenous um, area because they were copying the local types of the Mathura region. Agilizers, as I have shown, that agilizers of coins had this Abhishenjan of Lakshmi type, and these were uh, this area were taken from the local rulers by the Indo-Scythians. Thus, it was a, a territory where there were multiple rulers having accommodation and sometimes using local devices on their coins. Thank you.